The previous clip was me attempting to blow myself up in the workshop. This is steaming in the garden using a Castle Steam V6 model boiler. I took no chances this time. That was my friend Mike who owns this boiler and all the engines that you will be seeing running today and I got him to light the boiler as it's his boiler and nothing really to do with me. I just piped it up. And luckily, because the boiler was outside and there's some wind, there wasn't the boil of flame, so he didn't singe all the hairs on his hands. After lighting the boiler in the workshop, I don't have any hair on the back of my hands to singe. Initially, quite a bit of condensation came out of the chimney, but this is condensation from just inside the top cap of the boiler. Eventually, it did raise steam. Once steam was raised, we used the rotative pump to fill the boiler. The last time we steamed this boiler, we filled the boiler far too full and it took ages to raise steam. This time we were more sensible. The water was only about half an inch above the bottom nut of the water gauge. And obviously less water equals more steam quickly. But now as we have a lot of pressure, which is diminishing rapidly because the pump is pumping lots of water in there, it's time to fill the boiler right to the top and then just wait until it makes up the pressure again before starting. The first engine that we're going to run is a very nice example of a Stuart Models beam engine. I'll call this one Stuart Models beam engine number one. I should call it the beam engine that I sold to Mike about three or four years ago and now I've bought it back. And what I'm going to do with this beam engine is fit some drain cocks and clean off all the rust and then it should look really nice. This engine always did run very well, and it's still running very well. It's just a pity about the rust because it's been stored in the cellar. But anyway, with a bit of work, I'll get it back to its former glory. Unfortunately though, in this video, you can't hear the evenness of the exhaust beats because the safety valves are blowing off. I've adjusted these so that first one of them blows off, followed immediately by the other one. And at the moment, they're both blowing off and evacuating all the excess pressure from the boiler. In this clip, I've set the rotative pump going, so it's now pumping water into the boiler and the pressure is starting to drop. I could, of course, turn the gas down, but that's cheating, really. I like to keep the gas pressure up. I will stop talking now and let you hear the exhaust beat before the safety valves kick in again. So that's beam engine number one, but I bought this one, so this one is not for sale. This next steam engine is completely different to this small beam engine. It's a twin 5A engine, which has two two and a quarter inch diameter cylinders, which is quite a lot really for a boiler like this, running off a tiny little gas burner. But as you can see, it's running, it's not running fast, but at least it's running and it's running continuously. There is always going to be a slight clunk with this engine. It's the way the two engines are coupled together. This coupling is not solid. It's just a double chain on a pair of sprockets and it's a great way of connecting two crankshafts together. But there is a little bit of play between the two engines and it's not a problem, it just makes a slight noise. Don't forget this is not really a twin 5A. This is two entirely separate 5A steam engines 
connected together. And next up for the garden steam in is a Stuart Models beam engine. This is the second one. And this is a red one because it's painted red. And it has a nice little condenser with it which collects the oil residue and just allows steam to come out of the pipe rather than a combination of water vapour, water and sticky steam oil. I worked on this engine a while back and it runs very well indeed. You can't really hear the exhaust much on this engine because the condenser acts as a bit of a silencer and also at the moment both of the safety valves are currently blowing off on the boiler so you can't hear much more other than that. This is a very good example of a beam engine. It's mechanically good and it runs very smoothly. The general rule when working with boilers is if the safety valves are blowing off it's time to do something. In this case because we have a fixed gas pressure it's time to put some more water in. This will drop the pressure and then there'll be a slight time period while you wait until the pressure builds back up. It's not really the best way to run a boiler. What you should do is have the pump pumping just enough water back into the boiler to compensate for the water that's been evaporated by the steam engine using the steam. Water gauges are a very simple yet clever idea. A piece of glass tubing that shows you how much water you have in the boiler. Sometimes they get air bubbles in them like this. You can see there are a couple, maybe three, and that's no problem at all. The problem is when all the bubbles join up and you suddenly have no idea of how much water you've got in the boiler because the entire centre section of the water gauge is one big air bubble. This is why you need to use what's called a blowdown valve or a blowdown cock. All you have to do is open and shut the valve very quickly and all the bubbles miraculously disappear. The next engine steaming in the garden is a Stuart Models number no. 4. This is quite a simple engine, it runs very well. It's a little bit on the rusty side and I changed the displacement lubricator because this one was a very small one from a Cheddar Models engine. This is another Stuart number no. 4. This one has a mechanical lubricator and it also has a water pump. I worked on this engine a while back, but before I worked on it, the owner of the engine, a man called David Hyatt, did a lot of work to this engine. He bought it from the auction site that we all know and love, and when it arrived, he was horrified to find that it was built as a single acting engine. And as such, it didn't even have a lower cylinder cover, never mind a gland or anything like that. Also, the valve arrangement in the valve chest was completely wrong. So by making a few extra parts, Dave converted this to the normal double acting Stuart engine that it should have been in the first place. In this clip I've turned the engine round so you can see the water pump working, and this pumps water okay. The mechanical lubricator takes care of the lubrication, and there's also a small oil cup at the top that lubricates the crosshead. The exhaust beats are quite even, but you will have to take my word for it because once again, the safety valves are blowing off. This is a nice little engine with an interesting history and it's sad that Dave Hyatt is no longer with us. The engine that's currently running on screen is a Stuart Models number no. 4 once again, but it looks different to the others because it's a much older one. This is almost the same design as a Stuart Turner number no. 1 engine, but it's a bit smaller. And as you can see in here, this engine runs very well indeed. It's old but good. Just have a listen to the way it runs. Just before I go, I'd like to show you a collection of engines on the lawn. The one on the left is a Stuart Models beam engine that doesn't run. The next one, the green one, is the one I bought. Then there's the red one, that runs very well, you've seen that run. On the right hand side of the picture is the first of the Stuart number no. 4s. And this is the twin 5A. But strictly speaking, it's really two 5As on a common mounting. It runs very well indeed and is extremely powerful. And needs a much bigger boiler than this to run it successfully. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.